Hi everyone and welcome again to a live webinar hosted by Luis Reese and myself, Wes Gardner. Today we're going to dig deep and show you 10 of our favorite tips and tricks in Vectorworks Architect 2010. Hopefully many of you have had the chance to try some of the new features in 2010 and adopt them into your workflow. We believe you'll be duly impressed. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get started. Number 10. Okay, so here's another tip for a new mode uh, for a feature in uh, 2010. We'll start by drawing out some rectangular shapes that might represent pavers. Notice that this is just a graphic that the representation of stone would need to be scaled, but that's not the trick. We're using the rectangle by side center mode of the rectangle tool to draw these shapes. The tip here is when you want to make the rectangle change orientation, hold down the option key and you'll be able to complete the task quickly. Okay, yeah, that works great. Number 9. Okay, in this little exercise we'll take a look at wall sculpting. I know many times folks have avoided using the wall tool when drawing existing conditions in older buildings. Many times the walls have pilasters or other projections that were hard to reproduce graphically. So here's the trick. When detailing walls that don't have components, when you go to create your wall features, choose the None option in the Feature Component pull-down. As you can see, this will allow the feature to take on the poche of the wall. Okay, next. Number 8. All right, now let's look at creating some custom hatches. I know we've all worked in the hatch editor before, but here's a trick where that's not necessary. What we'll do here is draw a rectangle and then hatch it with one of the stock Vectorworks hatches. I'll then use one of the features in 2010 to resize it and maybe we'll rotate it to some prescribed angle. Okay, perfect. So now here's the trick we need to export the hatch as a DWG. And this is as simple as using the export function and going to DWG, then maybe giving it a name and save it on your desktop. Okay, now I'll just go to my desktop and using the drag and drop feature, bring the hatch back into Vectorworks by dropping it on the drawing. I'll then give it the scale of the drawing and that's pretty much it. I can now rename my custom hatch definition and use it wherever I need, as now it's saved in the resource browser. In fact, I'm going to go make some dry stack stone hatches right now. Okay, next. Number 7. Okay, so now here's a trick for sifting through all the myriad of fonts that seem to either ship with an application or accumulate over time. Either way, it can be tedious to scroll through the entire long list. So here's a tip. You can use the keyboard to narrow your search. So if I hit maybe the Z key, I'll go to the bottom of the list for all the Z fonts. Or perhaps maybe TI, and I'll go to the font that starts with those letters. So that's a pretty cool way of scanning the list quickly. But wait, there's more. The same trick works in the object info palette. Clicking on the font button activates the list and then using the same keyboard commands type in the first letter the font begins with and there you go. Type in a T or a TE or maybe a P and you'll get there. In addition, the same shortcut works for pull down menus as well. Okay, yeah, I like that. Number 6. Okay, so now let's talk about dimensioning. To show this, we'll draw a couple of rectangles, and then we'll snap a dimension between the two. And now let me tweak that dimension a little bit so I can show you a new feature. I've added a fraction to the dimension. This isn't necessarily a tip, but it is nice to have. If we go up to the Units dialog box under Document Settings, we'll see that we've added a couple of new fractional options. The first one was the original version. So now we can choose. I kind of like the middle one. Okay, so now returning to the dimension string, and this is kind of subtle, but now that I've zoomed in, 
the rectangle and part of the dimension string are off, the off to the right of the screen. Yet if I click on the dimension string, I still get my three dots, allowing me to pin the end of the dimension line. This is all part of the improvements to the DCM, or Dimensional Constraint Manager, and I think it's pretty cool. Number 5 Okay, so using this little house design, I'd like to share a tip on getting a schedule to sort correctly. Prior to this, you had to add some leading zeros to achieve this. So let's take a look at a typical window schedule, and you'll see that the numeric order for the windows is a little messed up. Like I said, the workaround was to insert leading zeros before the actual window number. However, we can now add a simple function that will straighten this out. If we get into the database header row and insert the word value just after the equal sign and just before the record ID, you'll see that the sort order now yields expected results. Okay, looks good. Next. <laughs>